Hello and welcome to another NGen Math 8 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler and today we'll be doing Unit 3, Lesson 10 on Rigid Motions and Parallel Lines. Now in our last unit, we had a few lessons that we looked at that involved parallel lines. And we talked about all these different angles that are formed about parallel lines and the relationship between angle pairs that are formed by parallel lines. But we never really explained or understood why those angle pairs had to be the, had to have the relationships that they did. In this lesson, we're going to actually look at how we can justify that certain angle pairs are congruent, i.e. they have the same measure, by using rigid motion properties. So let's get right in it with a parallel line review. Here we go. Some parallel line review exercise number one. In the diagram, lines M and N are parallel and are crossed by transversal line T. The eight angles formed are shown numbered. Answer the following. Letter A, list all corresponding angle pairs. All right, since we've already worked with parallel lines previously in the course, I'd like you to pause the video right now and see if you can, if you can list the four corresponding angle pairs. All right, so remember, corresponding angles are angles that show up in the same relative positions on the lines that are cut by the transversal. So for example, angle one, if you will, is in the upper right left-hand corner of these four angles. The one that is up here that's in the upper left-hand corner is angle seven. So angle one and angle seven are corresponding angles. Let's write down that pair. Angle one and angle seven. Okay. So what are the other three pairs? Well, angle two is gonna to correspond to angle eight, angle three is gonna to correspond to angle six, and angle four is gonna to correspond to angle five. So let's get those three remaining pairs down. Here we go. We've got angle two and angle eight, angle three and angle six, angle four, and angle five. Whoops, that doesn't look good. Let's try that again. And angle five. All right. So corresponding angle pairs, angles that show up in the same relative positions on the two lines that are cut by the transversal. Now let's take a look at letter B. Give the two pairs of alternate interior angles. All right, alternate interior angles, also very, very critical. Pause the video now and see if you can list the two alternate interior angle pairs. Well, interior angles are the angles that are on the inside of the two parallel lines, if you will. Alternate means they're on opposite sides of the transversal. So angle one and angle five are an alternate interior angle pair, and angle three and angle eight are an alternate interior angle pair. So let's get those written down. Here we go. Angle one and angle five, angle three and angle eight. Okay, great. So finally, and of course quite important, is letter C. What is true about corresponding angle pairs and alternate interior angle pairs? All right. Well, why don't you go ahead and see if you can remember that. Well, the key will be for both corresponding and alternate interior angle pairs, the two angles are congruent. Or if you said they were equal in measure, that's also pretty awesome. Quite frankly, if you even said they were equal, I think I would accept that because it's the right idea. They're the same size. If one of them's 30 degrees, the other one's 30 degrees. If one of them's 120 degrees, the other one's 120 degrees. So the really technical, nice way of saying it is that they are congruent. But if that is too fancy of a word for you, you could say, or they have equal measures. All right, 
Now, all of that we saw in our last unit when we looked at our two lessons on parallel lines. But what we want to do in the lesson today is we want to see how we can justify these two things using rigid motions. So, let's review a little bit about some rigid motions. Exercise number two. For each of the following, use appropriate geometric tools, tracing paper and a compass, to do the following transformations of line AB. You label the images A prime, B prime. Okay, great. So letter A asks us to translate line AB such that A maps to C. Now you're going to do this with tracing paper, so I hope you have your tracing paper out. And as always, you're going to lay that tracing paper right on top of this diagram. You're going to trace the entire diagram out on the paper, and then you're just going to slide that entire diagram up so that point A maps to point C, and you're going to redraw what you see. Pause the video now and see if you can do that. Now for me it's pretty easy, right? Because I can just take this thing and translate it right on up until we get right there and then I would trace out that line and that dashed line. Okay, let's take a look at letter B. Rotate AB, line AB, about point C by 180 degrees. And again I want you to do exactly the same thing. I want you to take your tracing paper, lie it over the diagram, all right, draw it all the way out and then just hold that tracing paper down, rotate it by 180 degrees, and that's easy enough because just make that dashed line fall on that dashed line, this one fall on this one, and retrace out the diagram. Take a moment to do that. All right, let's take a look. So if I click on this and I rotate it 180 degrees, I will get something that should look like that. All right. Now, what's the point in both of these? Well, in both of these, what we see is that both translations and rotations by 180 degrees, and that's key, produce image lines that are parallel to the original, right? Parallel to the original. So in other words, right, when I took this line and I translated it, we produced an image line that was parallel to the original and likewise when I took line AB and I rotated it 180 degrees about point C I produced an image line that is also parallel to AB and those two transformations are going to be key those two rigid motions are going to be key to understanding why corresponding angle pairs and alternate interior angle pairs must be congruent so let's get into that in our next exercise here we go Exercise number three. On the diagram below, line AB is crossed by line CD. Letter A. Translate angle DCB and angle DCA along CD so that C is mapped to D. Label the images angle D, D prime, C prime, B prime <laughs> and angle D prime, C prime, A prime. All right. Well, see if you can do that with tracing paper. This is pretty similar to what we did in our last exercise in part A. Pause the video now and go ahead and do that. All right, again, it's a little bit easier for me because I just need to slide this thing right along like that, right? And now I'll label this point C prime. This point will be B prime, whoops. This point is D prime, and this point is A prime. Okay, now letter B. What must be true about the original angles and their images? Why? So in other words, what has to be true about angle DCB and angle D prime, C prime, B prime, and likewise angle ACD and angle A prime, C prime, D prime. What has to be true about those angles and their images and why? Pause the video now and see if you can answer. Well, they have to be congruent because translations 
are rigid motions, right? And one thing that we know about rigid motions, the most important thing, two things about rigid motions, is that they preserve distances and they preserve the size of angles, right? So, they must, whoops, must be congruent because translations are rigid motions. Just fit that in. All right, how about letter C? What must be true about line AB and line A prime, B prime? All right, pause the video now and see if you can answer that based on what we did in exercise number one. Actually, it's what we did in exercise number two. My apologies. Well, they must be parallel, right? They must be parallel, right? We saw, hey, our magic red pen. There we go. And it just came right back. <laughs> Doesn't matter how many times I'll, I'll, I'll trace over it. So they've got to be parallel, right? Because what we saw in our last exercise is that when we translate a line, right, then it produces an image line that is parallel to the pre-image line. So, finally, letter D. Translations help to show that what types of angle pairs created by parallel lines are equal in measure. In other words, what can we now justify are equal in measure based on translations? Well, we can now justify that corresponding angles are congruent, right? Because we know now that that angle is congruent to that angle, and they're corresponding, and that angle is congruent to that angle, because they're corresponding. So, corresponding angle pairs. So you can always justify that corresponding angle pairs created by two parallel lines cut by a transversal are congruent to each other because you could literally take those four angles that are crossed or created by the one transversal and the one parallel line and you could just translate them right up that transversal so they lie right on top of the other four angles. Now, let's see if we can get into the alternate interior angles. Exercise number five. In the diagram below, do the following. Letter A, rotate angle BAC by 180 degrees about point B, label the image angle B prime, A prime, C prime. Awesome. Okay, so what I'd like you to do is do this again. Now you can either do it with tracing paper and rotate around, or you can use a straight edge and a compass to do this 180 degree rotation. Take a moment and go ahead and do that. Again, for me, it's relatively easy. All I have to do is click on here, rotate by 180 degrees, hopefully let it go, and there we have it. All right, now, what must be true about, oh, I should label it, my apologies, let me put A prime there, C prime there, and of course, B doesn't go anywhere, so B and B prime are in the same location, that's okay, right? So now, letter B, what must be true about angle BAC and angle B prime, A prime, C prime? Well, they have to be congruent as well, right? Congruent because rotations are rigid motions. What would a video be without the red pen showing up? So I know I didn't ask why, but same thing, right? Just like in our last example, when we translated a couple angles, it produced image angles that were congruent. When we rotate this angle BAC around point B, it creates an angle up here, B prime, A prime, C prime, that also has to be congruent, right? This angle and this angle must be congruent because rotations by 180 degrees or by any measure, 
must then produce congruent angles. Now, letter C. What must be true about ray AC and ray A prime C prime? So what has to be true about that ray and that ray? Pause the video now and see if you can write something down. They've got to be parallel, right? And they've got to be parallel because what we saw in exercise two. When we rotate a line by 180 degrees, and that's key, it's not by some other angle, but when we rotate a line by 180 degrees about some point not on the line, it produces an image line that's parallel to it. So those two lines slash rays are parallel to one another. And finally, letter D. What kind of angle pair are angle BAC and B prime, A prime, C prime? Well, those are alternate interior angles, right? Alternate interior angles. So, we can justify that corresponding angles are congruent by using a translation, and we can justify that alternate interior angles are congruent by using a very specific rotation, a rotation by 180 degrees, right? And that's important because prior to this lesson, we didn't really have a justification for why corresponding angle pairs and alternate interior angle pairs were congruent. So let's wrap this up. Parallel lines are some of the most important ideas in all of geometry and in applied geometry. We have parallel lines everywhere in the real world. They're critical in art, in construction, in engineering, and of course the angle pairs that are created by parallel lines are also exceptionally important. Two of the most important are corresponding angle pairs and alternate interior angle pairs, which prior to this lesson we just basically stated they're congruent. You know, we measured them, we used you know, protractors to make sure that they were equal, etc. But we didn't have a really good sense for why they must be equal. Rigid motions can help us justify those. Specifically, translations can justify corresponding angle pairs being congruent, and 180 degree rotations can, can justify that alternate interior angle pairs are congruent. All right, so that was the whole purpose of what we were doing today. All right, well, I'd like to thank you for joining me for another NGen Math 8 video by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler, and until I see you again, keep thinking and keep solving problems.